Here's the frame data for all the lands attacks including startup frames, active frames, recovery frames, total frames, and I even included the damages. I've highlighted certain data that I found to be worth mentioning in the video so keep them in mind if you want to. Neutral Light is a great move against short to mid ranged weapons from unarmed to sword and axe. Feel free to use this move whenever enemies with those weapons are on the ground at decent range from you because this move outranges them and has very low recovery time so when used correctly it it is rarely punished by short to mid range weapons. I personally use this move the most versus enemies that are using short to mid range weapons and are more grounded. Sidelight is a great punish move against any types of weapons. It has slightly shorter range than the neutral light, but the lance user pushes the attack forward, letting it reach twice the distance of neutral light. It will still outrange most mid to long range attacks, but it's much riskier than neutral light because after it finishes, the user will still move forward a little bit during its recovery time, which is 80% longer than the sidelight recovery is. This makes sidelight very easy to punish when you miss. That's why I only use this move if the enemy has just missed an attack or I predict an obvious dodge. Sometimes I'll just dodge forward into a sidelight against enemies who have a tendency to wait and then back dodge when they see you make a move, especially the sword and hammer back dodge into downlight players. Sidelight can combo into side air, recovery, down air, and neutral air for a lot of damage. So if you think you can land an easy sidelight, then it's always preferable to the other attacks because of its high combo damage potential. Downlight is probably the safest lance attack. It moves the user backwards and has the same range as Sidelight at the end. It also has a crazy amount of hitboxes that last just about as long as the dodge is, which is why it's really good as a dodge in or spot dodge punish. It can also instantly counter and punish attacks with narrow downward range such as hammer, gauntlet, katars, and spear downers. If an enemy with one of these weapons like to engage from above like this, then you can downlight to quickly move out of the range while putting out hitboxes where you were meant to be, making it so the enemy will get hit once they miss the down air and fall into the downlight. Neutral Air is a very flexible move because of its wide range of hitboxes and being the only lance attack that lets you steer left and right as you see fit. So against any weapons, you can throw it out and back off safely if you miss. This is usually good if you think the enemy will dodge or jump forward above you as many try to do in order to avoid the long reach of the sad air and down air. I run into this the most against katars, sword and axe users where they try to double jump above the sad air or down air. This doesn't work too well against long range weapons like guns, spear and bow though because they try to get higher than the neutral air can reach since they have longer range. Even though the neutral air hitboxes extends all the way to the back, you mostly want to aim for the front hitboxes to hit because they come out first and therefore the hardest to react to. But the back hitboxes can be very useful for protecting you. If you start the neutral air when the enemy is in front of you, you can steer backwards to create distance in case you miss. But if you start the neutral air right next to or even below the enemy, then moving back doesn't help much, but moving forward will create more hitboxes between you and the enemy. So even if the enemy manages to get behind you when you start neutral air, they can still be hit by it if you move forward. If not, then they will be less likely to follow and punish you because the hitboxes will be in the way. So using neutral air whenever the enemy is above you in general is very safe and often rewarding to do. Side air is a great anti-jump move because it covers so much space above the enemy. So if you think the enemy is about to jump, then jump first into side air so that they'll jump into your side air. Also has great range that can outrange anything except gun side light and side air. It also moves forward and reaches as far as side light so you can contest almost anything horizontally with side air from quite a distance away. I like to use side air to contest against light attacks on the ground a lot. It's also great for punishing missed attacks or back dodges just like side light. It's not all fun and games with this move though because it's probably the most easy to punish move on lance. The hitboxes are very skinny so as long as the enemy is above or below it a decent amount then it will miss. On top of that you move forward during the recovery time similar to sidelight but by a bit more you end up just a tiny bit behind the farthest range of the sad air. So any weapon can punish you from any direction easily. It also has pretty slow startup and recovery frames as well so it's easy to see coming and easy to punish. So this move should be used with the purpose in mind rather than for simple spacing. Down air is very similar to the side air in terms of range, hitboxes and reach. The only difference is that it angles downward a bit more and hits stacked which means on top of you unlike the side air. So you can use this very similar to side air in terms of using it as an anti-jump move 
and a long range punish. Down air has decent startup time for an air attack, while being able to hit stacked, so it's much more reliable when you're fighting up close. Like if the enemy dodges very close to you, then you can use down air to possibly catch them. Another benefit of this is that you will move far away from them at a diagonal angle, so it will be harder for them to punish when you miss. Same thing if you want to engage with it. In the cases that the enemy is jumping slightly out of your range, hoping to catch you missing, you can speed dodge on top of them and then use down air to catch them at the top of the jump or as they are falling backwards. And overall it's a lot safer to use than side air because it goes at an angle that most weapons can't counter against. The ones that can counter it though, you shouldn't use down air against much. They include axe, katars, and bow because they all have strong upward diagonal attacks. Recovery is a great move to contest or engage with against anyone that's diagonally above you because it has great range that can beat any attack diagonally, except for bow down air. It's also a lot safer than the other attacks that moves the user forward because it has decent recovery frames and instead of moving forward constantly during the recovery, you're going to be falling downwards away from the direction you attacked, which makes it harder to punish if the enemy was diagonally above you. That's why I use this move very often against enemies who tend to jump above me a lot, and I almost never get punished for it. In fact, it's so hard to punish that sometimes I throw out randomly just so the enemy would try to punish me, but then I hit them with another attack instead. In general, this move should be used quite a lot whenever the enemy is diagonally above you. The Lance Ground Pound is one of the best ground pounds in the game. It has one of the best downward speeds right behind Sword and Katar's ground pound speed. A decent hitbox and good force, so using it for edge guarding is great. When using it, there's two big things to keep in mind. The hitboxes covers half your hitboxes and a bit in front of you, so you want to face your enemy when ground pounding. For example, the enemy is hugging the wall, so you can either jump slightly off the edge of the platform and then ground pound or jump a decent distance off the edge and then turn around it into ground pound to hit the side wall. The second thing is that it's so fast that just by using ground pound, you're going to move very far downwards without even holding down the attack button. Simply jump off the edge into ground pound without holding down will cover the whole side wall in every 1v1 map except King's Pass which it still covers most of. So be careful about holding it for too long. Also because of this, you almost never want to use this on top of the main platform because unless you're at 3 jumps height, then you will hit the ground which increases recovery time and makes it easy to punish. So stick to using this for edge guarding for the most part. Now I'm going to be going over some useful tips and tricks for Lance that can help your overall Lance gameplay. At higher ranks, people tend to wait for Lance to attack from far away because the moves are easy to see coming and easy to punish so you often see people jumping constantly slightly backwards like this and even dodge if you recklessly do an attack. During these cases, it's best to just jump forward into their attack zone and then hit where you think they'll jump or dodge to. This is safe against those players because they have the mindset that you attack them from far away and then they just move out of the way to punish you instead of attacking you first. So moving up to them instead of attacking and then attacking will catch them off guard while being safe at the same time. I often do this the most with speed dodge forward neutral air because it covers a lot of area above which is where the enemies tend to be when they're jumpy like that. But it really depends on how the enemy reacts. If the enemy tends to jump dodge backwards in the air, then you can jump forward into speed dodge side air to reach them. If they back off and dodge on the ground, then you can jump forward speed dodge into down air. If they simply try to double jump away really high up, then double jump forward as well while moving under them into neutral air. The idea is that Lance is a weapon that can force the enemy to attempt a dodge at very far range where they can't even counter attack. Which is why it's best to use that to your advantage by simply moving towards the enemy without attacking to make them waste dodge because they expect an attack and then punish them for it. But if you do this too much, then of course they'll see it coming and just hit you when you get too close since you've just been running into their attack zone. That's why it's really important to be able to switch between contesting and punishing the enemy to predicting where they'll jump or dodge away so that you can push forward and make them waste a dodge, which will give you a huge advantage. Mixing between these two tactics makes it much harder for the enemies to react to you. Downlight is a shortest startup attack on lands, so it's very good to follow up a lot of attacks with downlight since it also repositions the user making it harder to punish. It's especially good after using a neutral light because neutral light has very low recovery frames. So using neutral light into downlight has very little opening from the front. If you can, try to make use of the fact that side air and down air takes you forward by using it right next to the enemy a lot. Even though they can both reach very far, it's not good to always use them at max range since it means that enemies can see it coming easier and therefore can punish you easily. But when you 
use the attacks up close, then if it misses, then the attacks will carry you away from the enemy, rather than closer to them, making it more difficult to punish. The best way to do this would be to just speed dodge close to them, and then use sadder or downer. And if you're able to speed dodge past them, then do it into turn around sadder or downer. This really messes with the enemy, and could even make them attack in the wrong direction, because one second you're dodging behind them, and the next you're sidering behind them again. I do this a lot against enemies who prioritize jumping around waiting for you to mess up. It makes them confused and try to punish you unsuccessfully, making it easier to catch them. It can also force out a dodge as I mentioned earlier, making it easier to punish as well. When you're trying to recover to the platform, make sure you use side air frequently because it moves you forward while not losing any height at all. And if you're hit downwards and need even more height, then jump between the side airs because you can't constantly side air since there's a cooldown added to the next time you can use the same move again. So ideally, you would use side air, jump, side air, and then jump again. If all that's not enough, then use recovery. A lot of you have probably seen how you can simply be blocked if the enemy sees your recovery coming and then you're screwed. But if the enemy does that, then you will gain a speed dodge for hitting the enemy, so just use that to close the distance while getting some free damage off. I also recommend not charging the recovery for a whole second if you really don't want to get blocked. This makes it a lot harder to predict and give the enemy less time to get into position to block. If you do decide to charge it for the whole second though, consider charging it while facing away from the sidewall. You will likely get dodged back, since charging takes a second off the air dodge cooldown. And from there, you can simply dodge towards the platform, or even straight up into side air to get back easily. If your dodge doesn't come off cooldown and you're out of jumps, side air after the recovery to buy more time for dodge. Downlight has very little force and a decent amount of recovery frames, so it's always a good idea to follow up with the downlight. There's two follow ups I like to use the most. One is jump up into Satter in case the enemy jumps or dodges upwards. The other is chase dodge into Satellite, which you can combo for more damage with, so it's very rewarding in case the enemy dodges backwards. And here is a Sir to Death string on lands that is really popular. It's Satellite into Satter into chase dodge straight forward down air into jump side air, into jump side air again. All of the actions should be done pretty quickly of each other with little delays in between. It takes a lot of practicing to get used to and remember that it's only a string and it practically never works against players who are more experienced against it. This string could be avoided at any time with a dodge after the first side air, a jump during the down air, or just not jumping during the last two side airs. I do frequently get the down air part off on players around diamond level, and once, I got the second side air off which was enough to get the enemy. This string pretty much relies on good execution and the enemy not knowing how to dodge and jump or fall out of it. I hope this guide helps you out. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I have more ultimate guides if you want to check them out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.